So we've come down to White Springs today, down in South Wales. Nice close venue for me for a change. I just fancy we go on the Pleasure Lake today. It's absolutely stuffed with like quality silverfish. There's big skimmers, bream, high bridge, chub, eyed, huge perch. It's been a freezing cold morning, but we're just going to run through a few things like feeding our rigs, where to fish. And I'm sure if you put all them bits and pieces together, we can get a mint bag of fish from here today. So I think I'm just going to go and sit on peg 17. So I'm going to grab some kit out of the van and trundle over and get started. Okay, so we've jumped on peg 17. I know from, I've fished this peg a couple of times before and it's a little bit deeper on this end of the lake. You're looking at probably about six foot. So it's been a really cold morning and with that little bit of depth of water, I think it'll give us a good chance of catching some fish. So we're gonna go for three lines. We're gonna fish a short line where I'm gonna be able to throw casters out of my hand, keep that line fed all day. That'll probably be for later in the session. We might catch some big perch and some big bream there. And then two long pole lines. One way I'm going to feed positive, by that I mean I'm going to feed a, a lot of quantity of bait, so like three or four cups of ground bait with a few like free offerings in it. That'll be for later in the session, that'll be good for pulling fish in, we can just leave that line settle. And then the other side, I'm literally going to feed like a little golf ball sized ball of ground bait. And that's going to be, we can go straight over that and hopefully get into fish literally from the off. So I'm going to pop a little plum in on now, have a little plum round and then we can talk about where we're going to fish and why. Okay, so I'm just going to ship out now. I've got a little plummet on, a little 10 gram plummet, because the bottom's quite soft. So like I said, not so long back, I want to plumb up two lines. So I want to leave a, a fair gap between the two, so I'm just going to go at like 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock. So just going to drop that plummet in there now. And I'm a little bit under depth there. So you're looking at, you're going to be six foot deep there, as I said. So what I want to do now is I want to find the same depth that on this line as the next line, so I don't have to keep shipping back and changing my rigs. I can literally just swing back and forth from both lines. So I'll just swing around here now. I've got a rough idea of how deep it is there. So again, I'm just gonna pick a far bank marker, that tree on the other bank. Anyway, that's a little bit shallower now. That side is probably three inches shallower. So if I come back towards me a bit, just try and find that same depth. There you are, and that's, That'll be about bang on for both the lines. So I'll know now I'm just holding on to the end of my section for that line. Gives me plenty of pull behind me as well if I want to ship past and fish past my feed. And then I can just easily, if I catch a fish there, I can ship out this line and swing over there. I'll just replumb that up. And there's hardly anything in it. So that's perfect to have those two lines almost bang on the same depth. Just gives me that option of swinging back and forth over both my lines. Let's just have a quick run through of all the bait we got on it. It isn't a lot of bait, this sort of fishing is mega simple. So what I've got there, all mixed ready, is our grown bait. That's gonna be for our both long lines. I'm gonna put probably three or four cups of this on our positive line, like we talked about, to pull some fish in for late in the session. And then on our negative line, it's literally gonna be like a little squeeze ball like that. So that is, three parts crushed expander and one part sweet marine. Now, when you mix your ground bait, one thing to remember is you want to mix it early in your session. If you can, give it one mix in the house before you leave. So you just mix in a bucket so it's quite damp. That crushed expander will take a lot of water on over an hour. So put it in the back of your car or your van. When you get to the venue, pull your ground bit out, have a look at it. If you think it's gone a little bit dry, just get a little pint bait box, drizzle a little bit of water, mix it again so it goes so you feel as if it's quite wet again. And then leave it another 20 minutes and finally just push it through a riddle and then you'll have a beautiful mix, no lumps in it, but it'll have a lot of water in it. All the little bits and pieces will be saturated so you're not gonna get like any activity off the ground bit. Everything's gonna be full of water and it'll settle nicely on the, on the lake bed. So that's our ground bit. We've got sort of two pints of casters there. They are just to throw on our short line. Hopefully we can catch an odd big perch there on that. And then a few, probably a pint of live red maggots. That's going to be for the hook mainly and loose feeding a few with a catapult over the top of our long pole lines. And then finally, we've got a few dead fluoro pinkies and a few dead red maggots. They are just going to be 
as food items in our ground bit. So when we put our little ball in, I'll probably put 10 or 12 dead maggots, a little pinch of dead pinkies in with that, and then maybe a little bit more on our positive line. So the bait is really, really simple. So the last thing to look at now before we start is a quick run through on the rigs. The first rig, this is for where I'm gonna be feeding like little amounts of bait, like my negative line. And I wanna hold that hook bit stationary right over the top of that little pile of ground bait. So I've got a, a four by 16s Guru Natural float on there. It's got a 1.2 mil bristle, quite fine because the skimmers are quite shy biting. That's on 015 main line. Just running down, really simple. I've just got a, a bulk of number eight there with a little tiny number 12 trimmer, just to pull that float down to a little tiny pimple. And below that, I've got two number nine droppers, nice and positive. So if a skimmer does pick the hook bit up and rise up with it, I'll get a nice lift on the float. The elastics, a Preston, single five slip, beautiful for this sort of fish. And you can just whack into them on the long pole and ship back and you, you feel as if you're never gonna pull out of a fish. But just above my float there, I've got two little back, start, back shots. They are just like number 10 cubes. There's a bit of a wind kicked up now, so I can just sink them under the water and it'll stop any surface skims, stop my moving my float all the way because I want that bang over where I put that little bit of bait in. So that's the first rig. That's probably the rig we'll use most of the day, to be fair. The next rig is for where we're fishing in close, where we're throwing bait out the hand. So you've always got a constant drop of bait through the water and this rig is for fishing through the water and on the bottom. So I've got a little Guru Slim and a 0.3 on there. That's on 013 main line. And then from probably halfway down the rig to, to the top of the hook length, there's one, two, three, four, five, six number 10 shot. And the shots are getting further apart, the closer you get to the hook. So you'll get like a slow sort of a drop like that. Because we're throwing bait in, the fish will be coming up off the bottom. So that'll give you the chance to catch them on the drop and also on the bottom as well. Again, just got a little number five slip in there. 013 main line, 08 hook length, which is fluorocarbon, because the water's really clear here, I think just stacks the odds in your favour, and a little size 20 F1 pelt hook, which is the same as on the other rig as well, same hook length. And then finally, we've got, just in case the fishing's really good and they do come up off a bottom, I've just got a little shallow rig up, a little 0.2 slim, 013 main line. This time I got five number 11s from just down underneath the float, again, spaced further and further apart. 08 hook length again and a little 20 hook to finish up. So three rigs there for three different st you know, styles of fishing. One positive over your bait, one for falling through with your loose feeding bait and one for fishing shallow. So I literally can't wait to get back out there now. So I'm going to get out and do a little bit of fishing. We've been in fishing probably 10 minutes, just over that little negative line, like what we spoke about. Just over that little amount of ground bait. And we haven't had to wait too long for a quality silver fish, which is a nice start, especially on a freezing cold day like this. So what have you got there? I don't even know what that is. A little skimmer, look. So that's a nice fish to kick off with. Probably, oh. 12 ounce or so, nice little skimmer. So that was quite a quick fish. So I'm gonna keep plodding away now, see if I can catch a few more fish and work out the best way to catch a number of fish to make the most out of our session. So we just clonked into another one on our long line. That's probably our sixth or seventh now. And already, we haven't been fishing probably an hour, and already have worked out a couple of things that's just up, help us up our catch rate. The first one is fishing past our feed, where we fed a little ball of ground bait and fished probably three foot past it. The other is 
regular topping up, not leaving the, the swim die completely after every sort of three fish. What's that, an eyed? Just drop another little nugget of ground bait in with a few dead reds and an odd caster in there. Nice little eyed look. Lovely fish then. On the last thing, which has definitely been really good and helped pull some extra fish in, is just loose feeding a few maggots for the catapult. Not many, like every time I ship out, I'll ship to my tape on my section, ping a few maggots and then ship the rest of my section out, flick the rig past and I can almost get it every time you get a bite to win that. So it's been really nice to be fair. No little fish, just all good fish. Doing a few different things to get a couple of extra bites to get the most out of your day. But I've still been priming up my short line, just the six sections there. I think I'm going to keep going on this for about an hour. Just as our light starts to go, I think we've got a right good chance of a couple of big bream or even a nice big perch on that short line. So I'm just going to carry on, see if we can winkle a few more bites. And then we'll look to have a little drop short. There we are, we've clonked into another quality fish on the short line. That's come quite good now towards the end of the session. So I think I'll try and get this in and then we'll wrap it up because the light has started going now and it's gone a bit chilly like so. Let's just see if we can put this in the net. I'm not even sure what it is. If it's a, it's a big, is it a big roach? I can't see it. It is, yeah, look at that. That's a nice fish to finish on. How about that for a roach look to finish on, on the short line? Just where we've been flicking them few casters through the day. Now I'm sure there's a commercial fishery similar to this around, you know, they're all around the country, so they're pretty much guaranteed there'll be one near you somewhere. Okay, just to summarize, the, po the positive line hasn't gone off today, but on another day, it can be your best line. So always put it in, you can save your bacon at the end of a session. Our negative line's been brilliant. Just fed that one ball, caught a load of skimmers through the day. What's been really good and nice, pinging a few maggots on it, and then fishing sort of half a meter past your feed. It's been really good. And then where we've just primed up short all day, flicking a few casters, we've had a beautiful little run there now, some good quality roach and stuff. I'm sure there's a venue similar to this around where you live. A lot of these commercials now are full of big quality silver fish so give these few things we've done today a try i'm sure you can have a mint day's fish in <laughs>